So imagine if you flipped a thumbtack 100 times and you counted how many times it landed point up or how many times did it land on its side. The results might be shown as in the following table. So when you look at this table, out of the 100 times that you threw it, total 100 times, it landed point up, landed on its back, so to say, 15 times, and it landed on its side 85 times. So instead of it being a theoret theoretical probability of what should happen, what we have now is a empirical probability of what did happen. So if I wanted to know what's the probability of it landing point up, I would say how many times did it land point up, which was 15, over how many total times, so this is point up, over how many total times, which was 100. So the empirical probability would be 15 one hundredths, which is the same thing as 0 0.15. What you will notice is with theoretical probability, we usually do fractions. Empirical probabilities, we usually do decimals. When it's a real-world number, we like putting it into context. In fact, what you might even do here is change it to a percent and say approximately 15% of the time, or in this case exactly 15% of the time, the thumbtack landed point up. So, exact same thing here once again. To find the probability, the empirical probability of an event, it's the number of times that what you got what you wanted over the total number of times the experiment would, was done. Well, when do empirical probabilities come into play? A lot of time when we want to look at statistics or analyze data, we will use empirical probabilities. So let's look at example 7 here. Example 7 says, a survey showed the following information on the ages and party affiliations of registered voters in a certain city. If one voter is chosen at random from the survey, what is the probability that the voter is a Republican? So what we want to do is we want to consider the Republicans. How many Republicans are there? Well, it looks like there's a total of 1,038 Republicans. So that's what we want. What we want is Republican. What we want is Republican. And then what we have to divide that by is the total. So if I look here, what's the total number? Well, if I go in the bottom right corner, I see that the total number is 3,228. So if I wanted to calculate this theor or sorry, empirical probability, I would take what we wanted, the Republicans, which was 1038. I would divide that by the total, which was 3,228. Again here, what I could do, I could simplify this as a fraction. Go ahead and do that now. I'm getting 173 over 50, 538, or even, it depends, because the problem doesn't say, if the problem doesn't say, we always have to assume that we want to write it as a reduced fraction, but the reason I don't like writing it as a reduced fraction is this reduced fraction truly means nothing to me. If I look at the original fraction of 1038 divided by 3228, that tells a story. The 1038 is the number of Republicans. The 3228 is the total number of people that were in this survey. Whereas if I look at 173 over 538, even though that's the same numerical value and a simplified value, that doesn't tell me a story. 173 is not a single number on this chart. 538 is not a single number on this chart. So truly, in all, in all honesty, in the real world, I would either leave my answer as the original fraction, because that tells a story, or I would give the decimal approximation. Let's do that now. I'm getting a decimal of 0 0.322, which would be about 32.2% of the population is Republican. So I could either write the answer as a reduced fraction, the original fraction, a decimal, or a percentage. I would just read the problem to understand what they wanted. This one didn't specify, so we have to assume it's a fraction, but what makes sense to me more in this real-world problem would be the percentage. 32.2% of the people in this county were, or in this city, were Republican. Let's go ahead and look at example 8. It says, using the data from the previous example, what is the probability that a randomly selected person is between the ages of 30 and 39 and 49? So let's look at this chart. Here's 39 to 49. The total that were 39 to 49 was 773. 
So again, if I want to know the probability between 39 to 49, I'm going to do how many of them were actually between 39 and 49, which was 773. I'm going to divide that by the total number, which was 3,228. Again, this doesn't tell me which way to write my answer. I should presume that they want a simplified fraction. Again, in real-world examples, I do not like simplified fractions. This tells me a story, 773 of the 3,228 people in the city were between the ages of 39 and 49. Let's go ahead and write this as an approximated decimal and a percentage as well, though. So if I do 773 divided by 3228 in my calculator, I'm getting an approximate decimal of uh, 0 0.2. 239. I'm just choosing randomly to, to round to three decimal places. So this would be approximately 23.9% of the population, or almost 24% of the population, was between the ages 39 and 49.